Good morning. My name is Charlotte McLean and Sapo. I'm the coordinator for disability development at USAID. It gives me great pleasure to be able to make a few remarks this morning at the regional dialogue on access to elections for persons with disabilities. This is indeed a very important issue. And before we go into why this is an important issue, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Judy Human. Hello, my name is Judy Human. I'm the Special Advisor for International Disability Rights at the U.S. Department of State. Charlotte and I are very excited to be able to be participating with you today, and sorry we couldn't be there with you in person, but wanted to join together to be able to have a small discussion about why we consider the issue of participation of disabled people in the electoral process so very important. Um, I'd like to start out by saying that, you know, I'm 64 years old, I'm from the United States, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and when I first went to vote, uh, which was a very big experience for me as a young adult to be able to participate in the electoral process, I was not able to get into the electoral place by myself. My father had to carry me up a number of steps, so that was quite embarrassing. And in addition to that, it was not possible for me to independently um, actually vote because the ballot was too high. So. I had to share my vote with my father. That's one of the very uh, important issues, I think, when we talk about uh, participation in the electoral process. Our ability to be able to be independent, to come and go, and to be able to exercise our right to vote in secret. And if one is blind, the ability to exercise your right to vote in secret, meaning that you can choose someone to come in and support you in voting, um, if it's a manual, uh, electoral uh, ballot process, um, and to be able to ensure that as disabled people we are able to show ourselves and our communities that we are vital members of our communities and wish to participate and are working as you are during this conference to look at ways of collaborating with government and civil society to remove barriers which have prevented you from appropriately participating. And I just wanted to add on to what Judy said because she mentioned the fact that she has, a, has personal experience in terms of voting, but unfortunately this continues to happen in the world today. A lot of persons with disabilities continue to be excluded and discriminated against in terms of voting. And therefore we're really excited to see the coming together of the ASEAN countries to begin to think about how to bring down those barriers. Um, Article 29 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities specifically speaks to the importance of including persons with disabilities in election processes. And I think impor it, it's important to recognize that we should not just focus on the physical aspect of voting, but that we need to understand it as part of a larger democratic process. So how do we ensure that persons with disabilities are A, voting, but B, part of the processes, that persons with disabilities are themselves on the ballot papers? Um, that persons with disabilities are engaged in political parties um, and that they too can be part of influencing society and shaping society so that hopefully societies can become more inclusive. I think that's very important and I hope that over the course of the days that you're going to be there this week, one of the things that can happen is people can also be talking about both what the positive and negative experiences have been uh, when you or colleagues have tried to vote. I think it's important for the human rights organizations and government participants to really more clearly understand uh, those barriers so that people can really get behind effective implementation of the laws which are being uh, developed. Implementation is obviously a very important part of helping to ensure that good laws, in fact, become a reality. And for many people, and now we're talking specifically about disabled individuals um, in your country, um, if people have not been able to participate, uh, people may be fearful about coming forth. And therefore, I think looking at activities which really help raise awareness, not just of the non-disabled people's community, but of disabled people themselves, to be able to see that um, they are a part of the electoral process within your country. And that the ability to join political parties, to be able to express their views within political parties, to be able to look at running for office is very important. 
And all of that takes work and takes resources. And so I think it's important as you think through this issue over the next couple of days, is to think a bit about what kind of resources are needed to ensure that people with disabilities are in fact included. Obviously, you'll have the, the, nest, the resources like making sure that polling stations are accessible. But very importantly, it's going to be essential that you look at building and training, a, a building capacity, both of people who are involved in the electoral process, but also building capacity amongst persons with disabilities themselves. So building capacity is a very important issue. So training of all stakeholders requires resources and I think would be something that you need to think about um, over the next couple of days. The issue of registration of persons with disabilities is also an important issue. And again, I would urge you to think about this as you deliberate this, this issue over the next couple of days. And then I think finally, we need to accept the fact that electoral processes do require resources. Um, and that the inclusion of persons with disabilities is just, an ad just part of that process. Um, and we shouldn't see it as an additional set of resources, but we need to see it as part of the resources that are um, allocated for voting in any one country that um, we're working in. I think that's a very important point, or a series of points actually that Charlotte has raised. Uh, resources are something that are given uh, to ensure that elections uh, can be held and that the citizenry can participate. And disabled people have been excluded from that, which in many ways has meant that sites are being selected that are not accessible, which excludes certain people from being able to come and vote, or there haven't been positive messages put forward encouraging people to register to vote and to participate in the elections. Now, this can be said also frequently for other uh, groups within countries. Women may not have been in, encouraged in the past to participate in elections, and therefore you'll see awareness campaigns and the involvement of the women's community to really um, help ensure that people will participate. So that is a resource issue. It, as Charlotte is saying, it doesn't mean that there's additional uh, fiscal resources that are needed in order to help advance this issue. What's critically important is that disabled people are seen as a part of the whole and that um, the government and civil society recognizes that um, the need to be able to have as many people who wish to be participating in elections actually be able to vote is what you're really striving for. I'd like to share a couple of examples of activities that I've been involved with over the years. Um, I started out working with a nonprofit organization in California called the Center for Independent Living. We put great emphasis on the issue of elections, and we did that in a number of ways. We had uh, voter registration materials at, within the organization so that if people came to the center, uh, they would see voter registration information, and we were able to help people if they needed help to actually be able to fill out the forms. Uh, we would ho have a table in front of our center to uh, encourage people that might not even be participating uh, within our organization to register to vote. And what was very important about that uh, was that the people that were running for office in our city uh, really began to see that the voices of disabled people were very important because we really actively engaged. We were actively engaged um, during the day of the elections. We volunteered for different political parties. Uh, we worked with the various political candidates. We got disability to be a part of the agendas for those people that were running for office. So active participation not only increases the number of disabled people that are voting, but it also allows those people who are running for office to take more seriously the agendas that you're trying to put forward. And I think for me, the issue around voting is really one of those fundamental rights. Um, I mean, I think for persons with disabilities, to be able to vote, to be part of, of that process really links us to society and to the broader citizenry of, of uh, the country in which we live. So it's a very serious issue, it's a very important issue, and there's a responsibility on the side of those that develop and monitor um, the voting process, but there is also responsibility on the side of persons with disabilities to be informed and to be engaged in the process of voting. And 
you know, this is a gradual process um, in all countries. Uh, getting people to recognize that the vote can make a difference in your country if, in fact, you are able to meaningfully participate. Uh, when I look back over the last couple of decades here in the U.S., I see some very dramatic changes that have occurred. Certainly in the 1960s, uh, when I started to vote, uh, there was really no attention being paid to the inclusion of disabled voters. But we've really seen a dramatic change over the last 20 years, where the major political parties now, in fact, let people on their staffs who are working to include disabled people in the electoral process. And as a result of that, uh, we also see that disabled people are being appointed to positions like Charlotte and myself, who've been appointed to positions by the Obama administration um, to be able to help ensure that the president's commitment to inclusion of disabled people in our international agenda will in fact become a reality. And I think finally to just say that we, we should not forget that people with disabilities make up 15% of any given population. And so it seems to me for political parties, it, it would be really sensible um, for them to make sure that they're reaching out to persons with disabilities. But reaching out and ensuring that persons with disabilities are involved in a legitimate way and sincerely involved in the process of voting. Um, and I think we both would like to wish you well and hope that you have great deliberation over the next three days. And we certainly look forward to seeing the results of this very interesting and timely conference. I think also I want to thank IFAS for the leadership role that they've been playing for many years now on the inclusion of disabled people in the electoral process in many countries around the world. And if we look to the future over the next five to ten years as the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities becomes more seriously implemented in countries, um, the work that you're doing now and in the future will play a very important role in helping to demonstrate the fact that disabled people want to be active contributory members of our societies. We want to be actively involved in the political process. We want to be actively involved in removing the barriers that have precluded us. And we want to be able to work effectively with governments. That government does have a responsibility to ensure that laws are effectively implemented. And I do hope that one of the outcomes of the discussions this week will be to look at that issue. I'd also like to say that uh, consideration should be given to possibly having a DVC with the U.S. Department of Justice, which has responsibility for implementing our Help America Vote Act, to be able to share information on the experiences that we've gained in the United States on helping to remove the barriers to enable people with all types of disabilities to actively participate in the electoral process. Have a great conference, and we're both sorry we're not with you now. Thank you.